Hello there, my little blueberry muffins. Welcome to an episode of Card Slinger. This is a series that I'm reviving from the past. It was a series that I started on my channel with the intention of having it just be the place where I did most of my talk about cards, oracle cards, tarot cards, etc. And talked really about my my experiences with decks, decks that I'm liking, decks that I'm um, supporting or expecting in the post, um, just what I'm playing with and stuff like that. And then it kind of um, um, it kind of took a back seat for a while it went into hiatus I want to bring it back but I want to do it in kind of a Kelly from the truth in story type style where you're actually looking at my tarot table you're actually in my card slinging space right now guys this is where I do all of my client readings and also personal readings for myself and for friends this is where I film all of my video readings so if you've had a reading from me you will notice this little space you will recognize it and if you've had a reading from me in the last few months you will also recognize this cloth because even though I do like to change up my cloths fairly regularly I just really really love this one this was a little present from Joey Morris who runs the shop starry eyed supplies and she has an amazing YouTube channel um, if you guys don't know who jo Joey Morris is by the way I'm sure that you do if you're watching me um, but if you don't I will link her channel down below go over and check her out she's awesome she does a lot of talking these days about shadow work she talks about witchcraft and her path really really love her channel anyway Coming back to uh, the topic at hand, this is my card slinging table and I'm going to spend some time today just talking about cards, talking about decks, talking about what I want to use more, talking about what I'm, what I'm expecting in the post, what I'm funding deck wise and do some comparisons at the end hopefully. Not really sure how this is all going to work out because it's my first time doing anything um, like this uh, where I just kind of am at the tarot table talking about whatever comes to mind so I'm just going to flow into it and and let things happen so I'll let you know what is in my cup I am drinking a Taylor's infusion today and it's called rose lemonade rose lemonade infusion this is so good and I've only got two more left after this cup which is a little bit painful I'm going to admit might have to might have to grab a bit more but I try not to go too over the top with tea because I don't know about anybody out there that watches me that also likes tea but when I walk past the aisle the tea aisle in a supermarket or in a little kind of like uh, boutique or you know bespoke kind of independent store or whatever it can get dangerous quite quickly I can go down into an intense rabbit hole made entirely of tea bags and I just come home with more tea than I actually need you know so what I like to do is I like to rotate I'm a rotator guys I'm a rotator with a lot of things and you're going to learn that during the course of this card slinger video in that I really like to rotate decks because otherwise I forget what I've got I don't use different things I use the same decks over and over again and things just get a little bit dull um, so I like to I like to kind of rotate so I've got a basket with things right at the front of my tarot shelves where there's a bunch of things that I want to reach for more and I'm going to show you what's in my reach for more basket a bit later on but I'm like that with other things as well I'm like that with my jewellery I have a little dish and a bowl on my dresser where I like to put pieces of jewellery that I'm intending to wear more or I'm intending to wear you know for the next month um, I put heavier pieces uh, on the side of my mirror I hang them on my dresser mirror and then I rotate so I have some big drawers where I keep my bracelets my chunky necklaces my delicate chains I've got a couple of boxes where I keep my rings and basically if I don't rotate my jewellery I forget what I've got and I don't have fresh experiences with my jewellery and I keep wearing the same pieces and I, basically things just end up um, stuck in my big chunky drawers for ages um, not really seeing the light of day which I think is a shame because I got locked into um, a really exciting jewellery collection habit many many years ago when I was a teenager so I've got a lot of really awesome things lots of awesome bits and pieces and I don't want to get into that habit of just wearing the same three necklaces so I rotate my jewellery that's one thing that I do and another thing that I tend to rotate is my teas I rotate my teas so I've got quite a few boxes of tea and some loose tea artisan tea that I buy on online and I just like to rotate it basically so I will try not to rebuy this Taylor's blend even though it is an amazing infusion because there are other things um, that will be asking for my attention and I've, I don't really think I, I know that I don't need to buy more but it is very drinkable it's very Moorish guys mmm 
So the first thing that I wanted to talk you guys through um, is the two main decks that I just used for the Samhain and Halloween readings that I did. I offer Samhain and Halloween reading options every year by Skype, by video and by email. And I just wanted to talk about the two strongest contenders for me for Halloween and Samhain um, decks. These two have been my trusty Halloween decks for the longest time now. I really love them both and I just wanted to talk a little bit about why each of them means so much to me and is so close to my heart so first of all i wanted to talk about the bubba studios bohemian gothic tarot i absolutely love this deck and this is what i did the majority of my halloween and Samhain readings with this year it is such a cool deck it's really gorgeous the blues and purples in this are riveting and you've got these little kind of flashes of deep claret as well and some splashes of other colours with things like the sunsets and in the clothing. There are these other colours that really kind of um, kick the palette into a new dimension as well. So it's a really strong concept. It's an incredibly strong palette which lends for an amazing, amazing atmosphere. The atmosphere in the Bohemian Gothic Tarot is just matchless. There's something about it you really feel like you're being plunged into a world. Um, now with my Bohemian Gothic, I actually had one before and it, it got destroyed in Floodgate 2015. Some of you will remember Floodgate 2015 uh, when there was some flooding that occurred that sent my roof in my little studio room tumbling down. And uh, it's just so natural to, to shuffle when I get cards out. Sorry guys, I don't even know why I'm doing that. Um, yeah, so my roof came in and unfortunately Bohemian Gothic was one of the decks that I lost and somebody very, very kindly sent me um, a, a deck, uh, sent me a copy and I was in tears when I opened it. I actually opened it in one of my video scrapbooks and when I see that it is the Bohemian Gothic, oh my days, it's just, it was lovely to have it back in the collection because I love it so much. So... Um, I'll show you some of the cards and just talk about why I love this deck so much. Now this deck is kind of more what I would use for shadow work readings, readings that involve deep shadow work. There is an undeniable seriousness to this deck and it does kind of sometimes make you feel a bit pensive in a way. So moody and cool. I love this Five of Cups with this ghostly figure standing over this tomb overgrown tomb so much ivy all over it to reflect the passing of time and, and the grief that is still ongoing look at this really apocalyptic sky here and all of these gargoyles on the side of the building really really cool so it's a really um, ghostly haunting deck i think it's really appropriate for shadow work i definitely would use this deck at other times of year it doesn't just come out during um, the time of Samhain, but it is a really strong contender for my Halloween and Samhain readings. This is the Justice card. Look at this judge. There's something really severe about that. And you've got this creepy ghostly figure in the background there. I love this Frankenstein's monster, Three of Pentacles. That's very clever because obviously Three of Pentacles has got this strong theme of learning and developing your knowledge base and stuff, and obviously Frankenstein bit off more than he could chew when he made that thing. <laughs> so I think that's a clever uh, depiction there of the Three of Pentacles. The sun is really haunting. It's kind of really ghostly child on horseback with all those creepy trees behind. Really cool. I love these rays of light coming through as well and just kind of settling down on the horse. I absolutely love this Emperor card. This is one of my favourite Emperor cards. So dramatic. I love that incredible coat and the purple outfit there. It's really cool. So, um, oh, and I really like this Five of Pentacles too. This is a gorgeous card with this mother kind of looking up with this real resilience and strength holding her children and you've got that red coming from the lamp. Really a gorgeous image. So um, my, uh, my spreads that I do for my clients are usually six positions long. And even though that seems like probably a small amount of cards for some people whose full length readings would be more like 15 cards long, six cards is what works for me and I do get quite a lot of depth out of those six positions. 
when the bohemian gothic tarot is being used and those six positions are laid out on my tarot table you really are plunged into the world because the palette is just so specific and the concept is so strong and you've got like i said those splashes of color as well that come through from this incredibly blue purple palette you know it's overwhelmingly blue purple and dark so when you get these little flecks and splashes of color they really stand out this is a creepy judgment card so it's really lovely to see um, the bohemian gothic tarot laid out and i definitely would recommend if you own the bohemian gothic or you're thinking of pur purchasing it when you get it lay it out on the floor lay the whole 78 cards out on the floor it doesn't really matter the order so much but get it all out on the floor because you are really plunged into a world when you look at the bohemian gothic tarot and actually kind of see it in all its majesty laid out it is a really awesome deck the atmosphere is is just something else okay so the next thing that i want to talk about is the zombie tarot insight and ammunition for surviving the undead uprising this is obviously what it says on the tin it's a zombie tarot deck this was actually on my wish list and a subscriber very kindly sent it over to me and i fell completely in love with it it is very very cool this deck was created by paul keppel who also created the housewives tarot which i know is popular with a lot of people i don't actually own the housewives tarot um, i do think it's visually pleasing i'm not so sure about the concept and the subject matter i'm not sure if it would really fit into my collection in any kind of cohesive way and i don't think i would reach for it necessarily um, but i really do enjoy zombie tarot and when you get into it if you've seen housewives tarot you will see the similarities here and again i think I think Paul Keppel, as far as creators go, is clearly a bit of a world builder. Um, you really do have this sense that you're being plunged into something. And I guess I must really like that when I'm using a, a deck for a Halloween or Samhain reading. Uh, this is one of my favourite depictions of the Queen of Cups, so it's great that she's right on the top there. I actually posted this Queen of Cups card to my Instagram on the run-up to Samhain. I really love her. She's eating a brain on the beach. Really great zombie Queen of Cups there. So you might you might kind of say in a way that this is a little bit more of a light-hearted option um, than the than the Bohemian Gothic, but certainly this deck does give very profound readings. There is something very meaningful about it. I've actually given some really profound readings with this deck this year. I just want to interrupt myself to say I also love this King of Cups. I love the fact that he's being submerged and he's only sort of at eye level totally submerged in the water i think that's very meaningful for the king of cups who is my favorite king in tarot my favorite of the four so um you know you might say that this is a novelty deck it's kind of gimmicky it's not going to give super profound readings but it definitely does um i have i've definitely given really awesome profound readings with it i would probably use it less for things like shadow work and release work and much more for clients who have booked a reading because they want to take some kind of action they want a game plan they want to be shaken out of their from out of their kind of familiar sense of stasis they want to get out of the comfort zone they want to take some initiative maybe and they want something really kind of high vibe and instructional to get them feeling like they've got this new lease of life for Samhain. That's much more what I would select this deck for rather than probably that deep shadow work. But you never know. I've definitely felt called um, to use this for sure um, for clients who have got that deep shadow work theme in their notes. There's a lot of this kind of 50s vibe happening here, 50s Americana vibe, um, that you get this kind of feeling of a lot of the 50s posters and Cold War propaganda, movie posters, that kind of thing. But you've also got a kind of Cold War um, dark vibe to it in the sense of kind of like nuclear disaster and radiation poisoning and things like that. So there's lots of different interesting cultural themes going on here. The undead are victorious. This is the Six of Wands. And this is a newspaper, newspaper headlines. This is really cool. I absolutely love this temperance card. Probably one of my favourites for temperance that I've ever seen. So this is also a very strong contender and it's really good card stock and it's just got a great vibe to it. So with Halloween and Samhain being over, 
I wouldn't necessarily say that I would reach for this at any other time. Um, I may do, but it sort of occurs to me as being specifically for me a Halloween and Samhain deck. I know for a lot of other people though it is a working deck for the whole year and I totally can can understand why but there are other things in my collection that I would certainly kind of instinctively reach for a lot more than I would reach for zombie tarot but it is a staple for my Halloween and Samhain readings and I really enjoyed working with it again this year. So now I think I'm going to talk a little bit about what I want to reach for more for the month of November. I've got this little basket here where I like to put things that I just want to have on my radar that I maybe have just purchased and want to get quite a bit of use out of so I can see how I can work with it and play with it or um, things that I've had for a long time that I really haven't played with much that I've completely forgotten about that I would like to just kind of get back um, into playing with. This box is really useful because it sits in a slightly different place over on my tarot shelves so it's not actually bulked up with all of the other um, decks which I kind of I kept kind of play Tetris a little bit with my decks so I just sort of slot them in and around and some of them are upright some of them are sideways and I just tend to find that I can get this really comfortable little Tetris vibe going on with them but this is kind of set apart from the other um, the other kind of tarot decks and oracle decks it's not necessarily with the rest of them so this is what I naturally reach for quite often I actually just leave this on my tarot table at night after I tidy things away as well so that I've kind of just got this sense of what I want to be playing with more and I literally just changed up what's in this box this morning. If you have quite a sizable collection and you do find that you keep reaching for the same things or you've kind of even forgotten what's in your collection and you don't really tend to go through it much, you don't have the time to go through it much, might I recommend a reach for more basket or box much like I have where you can actually take a few things out from your collection that you haven't worked with as much you would like to study or actively try using you would like to have to hand more so that you don't keep reaching for that same thing over and over again a reach for more basket is a really good idea and I'm going to show you what is in mine so first of all I'm going to talk to you about taro mucha yes the word is mucha it's not mucha or musha or musha it is indeed mucha the artist's surname is mucha uh, the x in the name in the cyrillic is pronounced <laughs> that's how it's pronounced so yeah taro mucha um, i got this quite a while ago it was sent to me by a gorgeous witch in south carolina who um, found herself not really using hers often and so she sent it over to me and i absolutely love it but it really has been gathering dust at the back of the collection there are other things that i've been using and going with as far as um, a 78 card standard tarot deck but i really love Taro Mucha. It's obviously a homage to the artist and it's based on the style of his work. It's really cleverly done. The colours are awesome. Um, there's a really beautiful colour palette here. I'm just going to get straight into showing you a bit. It's an interesting box as well. You don't see many that come off at the top although to be honest with you guys I'm really really not a big collector there are so many people like I'm on this Facebook group called for the love of cards um, I'll link it down below for you guys and I like to hang out on there and in that Facebook group there are people that are really serious collectors of cards guys and it is a pleasure to get to spend time with them and, and just even just to read through their conversations not necessarily get involved actively myself but just read through their conversations take note of the way that they talk about decks the way that they talk about why they're not going to be buying what they're not going to be buying why they are drawn to the things that they're drawn to um, how they curate their collections how they keep their collections um, kind of stored and categorized there's so much dedication that goes into it and so much more than I actually can exhibit with my own tarot collection certainly I do collect and certainly I do like to have different decks at my fingertips to use but in in groups like tarot nerds and um for the love of cards these people are serious in a way that I just am not you know I'm just like I'm purely an infant in comparison to some of these people so it's really awesome to see the level of dedication and thought and a conscious awareness that goes into the curation of a serious tarot collection so obviously I'm you know being that I'm not a massive collector I don't actually know how many boxes for tarot decks open like this but um I've certainly never seen another one. I don't have another one in my collection. So it's a cute little thing that comes out of the top like this. And you've got this book, which is a great book, by the way. The Tarot Mucha guidebook is um, certainly not to be sniffed at. Okay, so you've got this really awesome kind of 
twisty sort of ornate filigree type of border one reason that I stopped reaching for this deck or that I didn't really give it that much of a chance is because it doesn't have any titles on it. It doesn't have any words written on it and I really like words on my decks. I just like to be able to see immediately. Now obviously pictorially I can see immediately that that is the strength card. I can see that there is a woman and she's cuddling up to a lion in this lovely bucolic scene here. Clearly that's the strength card. I shouldn't need the word to tell me, you know. Um, there are others in here that are not quite as obvious, but it is fairly based on the right away imagery. You can see this is a two here and down here it's got a little cup to show you that it is from the suit of cups and of course it's fairly obvious for me straight away from this lion-headed angel that it is the Two of Cups. Same with the Two of Swords. This is a beautiful depiction of the Two of Swords, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. The drama here is just, yeah, <laughs> the drama. <laughs> very high drama, very high intensity card. And I love these greens and blues just dancing with each other. How gorgeous is that? Really cool. The Hermit card is also very cool again with those blues and greens just a really beautiful palette i'm filming this with natural sunlight guys if you can believe that in november in england having a really lovely sunny day today i hope this comes out on youtube as well as it actually looks on my camera because you do lose something in translation i'm afraid as you upload that's a really great eight of wands really awesome so I'm going to be reaching for this. This is going to be a deck that I'm going to challenge myself to use a lot more during the month of November. I really want to give it a lot more of my time and my exploration. It's really with the court cards I think that I would like there to be names um, rather than these pictures because I, I just, I don't know, for me personally I like words. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed but I do like me some words and I prefer there to be words on there but this is a totally usable deck there's no way I'm going to get confused with what these things are um, it might take me a little while longer just to kind of tot up how many cards um, of each suit there are which is something that I do like to do if you've ever had a reading from me you will know with my full length readings anyway that I do like to have a look if I'm using a tarot deck at which element is ruling whether it's the major uh, whether it's the major arcana or whether it is one of the four um, elements in the minor arcana and I do like to have a look at that so it's a little bit harder to tot up without the names immediately there for me to read because I'm just doing a very, very quick scan, the quickest of quick scans at the beginning so that I can see what's ruling. So obviously without the words, it makes it a touch more difficult. But the thing is, that's why you've got to work with the decks more so that you get to know them, so that you get more comfortable with the imagery and you can see straight away, um, you know, what it is. You can see straight away, you know, this is the Knight of Swords. You don't have to kind of scan a little bit more slowly, wishing that there were words there you, that you could quickly read um, you have an overall sense because you worked with the deck so much more you know so there is something absolutely riveting about this deck it's a really awesome homage to the artist I think and it's just got such an incredible Art Nouveau vibe to it look at that magician card how gorgeous really really stunning if you're not familiar with Alphonse Mucha's work guys he's a Czech was a Czech Art Nouveau painter and illustrator. Um, Google his work and check out some of his stuff. It is really riveting. If you're into that sort of thing, if you're about that Art Nouveau life, then you really want to give your eyes a little bit of a treat, give them a bit of a visual feast. Um, it's It really is gorgeous stuff. And this deck is a, is a really awesome tool that is very representative and reflective of his style. So it's really gorgeous. So moving on, the next thing that I want to make sure that I definitely put in for the month of November. In this box, I have got um, three Oracle decks and I've got three Tarot decks that I wanna be working more with. So I'll do the Tarot decks first, just to kind of, um, just to streamline it and make it a bit easier. So here is the Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg. I got this on my birthday two years ago. And I really love the gold. This is an awesome deck by Yuri Shakov. And it kind of is a, a tribute to that kind of Fabergé egg, Russian art style. Very traditional. I did not know when I first opened this deck that I was going to get so much use out of it and that I was going to love it so much. Of course, I'm a, I'm a real Russophile. 
I love all kinds of things Russian. I'm actually just allowing myself to get to grips with the language again after a little bit of a hiatus from that. In fact, I just did a three mile run at the gym this morning whilst um, brushing up on my Russian grammar. <laughs> I was like watching YouTube on the treadmill and brushing up on my grammar, which was really lovely to actually revisit the Russian language because it is just so beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, I am a Russophile, but I just, I didn't think this was the kind of deck that I would vibe with, but I really, really love it. I love this temperance card. I really love that, that gorgeous pop of red colour from the dress there. The Three of Cups. Again, this imagery doesn't really deviate at all from what we're used to with tarot, but it's just a really strong concept. It looks really satisfying when you lay out a spread. And some of the colours are quite surprising as well, and they draw the eye. Like, look at these incredible electric blue clouds um, from which the hand for the Ace of Swords is, is coming from. It's really, really gorgeous. And you've got this incredible kind of block sky blue coming through in the Two of Clubs from those windows behind. So there are just like these really ingenious little pops of colour that you're not quite expecting that draw the eye. And I love this angry sun in the sun card. Really awesome, very funny. Oh, I've got a little bit of upside down things happening here. Queen of Clubs is doing a tapestry. Really pretty. I want to show you the moon card, it's similar to the sun card with that kind of just really snarky looking moody face on the moon, which is great. <laughs> um, I, I was reaching for this a lot at one point in time, guys. It was really a staple deck. And then I kind of put it away for a while and I'm really looking forward to getting back to grips with it and playing with it a bit more. Look at this really ripped devil. How hench is that devil? <laughs> And then it's got tattoos on him as well. Very Russian. The reason that I say that it's Russian for the devil to have tattoos is because there's definitely this very sort of classist, weird um, judgment and discrimination against people with tattoos. In fact, um, one time when I was over in Russia, my employer told me how shocked and surprised he was that I had tattoos because I was so well-spoken and well-read. And I just thought that was insane. I was like, well, in my country, you know, we've got high judges that have tattoos. It's a really common thing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about the meaning behind tattoos and, and you know, how profound they can be. And he was just like, no, <laughs> um, only criminals and reprobates and members of the mafia have tattoos. So that was, I really found that quite funny. Um, and so that's why I say it's Russian for the devil to have tattoos, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's something I'm looking forward to playing with more, this particular deck. It's really, I think, um, a little bit like Marmite. You're either going to love it or hate it. It's either really going to work for you or you're not going to like it at all um, because it's it's quite sort of it's a rigid it's it's a rigid presentation isn't it this Fabergé egg border I think a lot of people would think that the imagery is too small and it's just all a little bit flowery and over the top but I think it's really gorgeous and I love how the filigree kind of Fabergé egg art around the sides for the borders is kind of jewel studded you've got these like red and blue kind of features in there and it just makes it look so decadent and just so unmistakably Russian. I just really love that. It gives me a fantasy vibe, this deck. It makes me feel like I'm being a bit transported. Okay, so the third and final tarot deck that I want to be using um, more for this month is the uh, Mythic Tarot. And this is the 1986 printing of the Mythic Tarot. This bag was given to me by Anek, by the way, from Nobody Here. A really awesome channel. I will link her channel below. She talks a lot about cards and really goes into great depth and, and talks about other interesting things, you know, to do with psychology and emotional growth and well-being and inner work and all that good... All the stuff that I like guys, all the stuff that I'm a fan of so I'll definitely link her channel for you guys below and I'm using this bag that she sent to me very kindly which is fucking gorgeous, look at the inside of that, it's stunning. So I'm using this bag that she kindly sent to me quite a long time ago to house my Mythic Tarot which was kindly sent to me by somebody who found out that I was looking for a copy that I didn't have to pay absolutely through the nose for because this is the first deck that I ever really learned with when I was a teenager. This is the first deck that I really, really took my study seriously. So I did have the Marseille deck, but I was just too young to get into it. And I don't think at the age of 12 or 13 that the Marseille deck is necessarily accessible. 
it was when I was 14 or 15 I'm not clear on the on the ages guys I've always been a bit sketchy about the ages um, but it was when I was about 14 or 15 that my auntie handed me this deck the mythic tarot which is based on the Greek myths um, with included with the book and everything and I literally dived into that book and I took my study all the way and it is thanks to this deck that I really got to the level of proficiency that I'm at now it was very accessible the guidebook was incredible um, and I really just fell in love and I learned of course so much about the Greek myths um, and uh, and that's never left me either I've always had this incredible working knowledge of Greek mythology this is Athena guys in the justice card beautiful image there with the white owl and the sword and scales really awesome justice card image um, so obviously I've had this working knowledge ever since now I did study Greek mythology at school but guys studying the Greek myths through this lens was just it was next level that is next level shit you're not going to be able to get that from learning at school i love this image of hades so cool so yeah i own the mythic tarot again which is a huge deal when i opened the package and i realized what it was i broke down into tears i did actually film some video footage of me breaking down in tears but i decided it might be a little much like you know it's, i guess it's more of a personal thing than potentially something i can put out there i don't know um if i can find it i'll, I'll put a little clip right here for you it's nice because i feel like i'm having this opportunity to just stop and really sit with the gravity of how much this system has done for me and how much it's changed my life and it's been a really big teacher for me a really big teacher and it's alive it's dynamic it's evolving it speaks and it helps you to forge a connection with yourself and with the depths of your psyche which if you can really get in with it and it's your kind of thing will remain unmatched throughout your lifetime there's nothing that quite has the same effect um and long may my journey continue but this has really made me tap into it and think about it on such a deep level it's incredible so yeah that should give you just a little bit of an idea of just how important it was for me to actually receive this guys it was a huge huge deal and i actually want to start working with it and and using it for client readings and really bringing it back bringing it back into my consciousness and i'm very very excited this is such a cool deck and the new version which is called the new mythic tarot just doesn't have anything on this it's not a patch on this 1986 version when i saw the new mythic tarot i was so disappointed because it i really couldn't find the original mythic tarot and every time i did find it it was a lot of money it was like 200 pounds or more and i couldn't justify that expense i knew that i would at some point but I couldn't justify it you know at the time um, so I did look at the new mythic tarot and I was just like no 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 this doesn't tick any of my boxes this isn't the same thing um, and so it, it was frustrating for a while and I finally got it back guys look at this page of cups this is Narcissus falling in love with his own reflection this is how I learned about the myth of Narcissus which was obviously very important later on when I came to read so much about psychology um, you know so it's, it was really important it gave me a really good grounding in the Greek myths and a very strong connection to the Greek pantheon on so yeah i'm really really happy to have the mythic tarot in my collection and i want to actually start to make it into a working deck again after all of these years i'm so excited okay so that's all the tarot decks that i've got on my agenda so now i'm going to talk you through the three oracle decks that i definitely want to make sure i work with during the month of november and play with do some personal stuff with them but certainly also use them for client readings um, the first of the three that i'll talk to you about is the sacred creators oracle by chris ann donnelly absolutely love this oracle deck the colors are gorgeous the presentation here is just beyond stunning this is absolutely my cup of tea it's focused on words but there is also this really beautiful delicate symmetrical sort of almost sacred geometry kind of imagery to it as well i absolutely love the moodiness and the shifting changing vibes in the colors there's so many different colors in this palette and yet there's not really anything that feels jarring or as though it kind of isn't cohesive it's a really cohesive deck even with all of these different colors as part of it the colors are just so there's a, a muted, almost dusty vibe to them that almost makes you sink into the deck as you're working with it and playing with it. 
and so even though there are all these different colors nothing feels jarring nothing feels like it's out of place not even the black card which says light in the unexpected which obviously is such a departure from the rest of the deck where there are quite a lot of pastels um but it, it just makes sense everything just makes sense in this deck it's just so wonderfully cohesive it's also got this gorgeous gold gilding along the side the cardstock is lovely so i really enjoy working with this now it does come with a really rather hefty book let me just show you the book okay so this is the sacred creators oracle book an abundance journey for your creator soul this book was um uh, this deck sorry was created primarily for um i think it's fair to say for creative entrepreneurs and also artists and people who are involving themselves in projects and wanting to finish projects and wanting to get the motivation together to maybe fund or finance that finance their projects so um, you know, it really is about business. It's about, um, you know, creative development and progression, etc. But I would argue that this deck can also be used to look into other things like relationships, for example, or emotional well-being. I don't think it just has to be about the creative biz journey, the solopreneurial journey, your journey as an artist. But it is definitely um, key for that kind of thing. You know, if you do readings about your business, if you're trying to grow something, if you're working on a project or you usually are working on a project and you are business oriented or art oriented this is the kind of oracle deck that you could really get some serious use out of and this book is just so pleasing there's quotes in here the advice for each card is really hefty you've got these incredible kind of subheadings that in themselves really just draw you in and help you to think about stuff you've got essential meaning self-care message creator message you've got journal prompts in here where you can really dive in and think more deeply about what the card is saying it's just so incredible and even aside from the different definitions for each card you've got just these other little lovely surprising things that come through like these you've got a cup um, you've got some kind of full page quotes and stuff like that where you just kind of stop and it's almost like you take a breather and you just really lean into the overall message of, of the deck and just yeah take some time to think more and just enjoy the journey so it's really a beautiful book that goes along with the deck the presentation is amazing the box is amazing i won't show you the box because it's actually behind my tarot shelves um, i like to have my decks obviously available to reach for at a moment's notice because i do this full time guys so there's not many days of the year that go by where i'm not shuffling something <laughs> so i can't really have big hefty bulky boxes around so they tend to get stored elsewhere um, but this this book is i mean i would just sit down and read this book you know cover to cover just really beautiful really fires up the imagination really enjoyable to to really kind of lose yourself in okay guys so i'm gonna talk next i've actually already got them out and have been kind of playing with them while i've been drinking my tea i'm going to talk next about the north and south song of my heart affirmation deck um i've had this for quite a long time and i've never really truly taken the time to play with it now i feel really silly because they came in these two plastic wallets which i've been trying to keep them in one represents the north and one represents the south and the cards actually pertain to and take inspiration from the north and south of new zealand and that's kind of a big deal with the cards and I've actually just taken them out of the bloody packs and now I'm not entirely sure which is which but I suppose on my explorations I will find out but I think you are supposed to merge them together in any case um, and use them as one set of 20 oracle cards these are absolutely beautiful guys you can get these on Etsy from a store called Hand Be That Pencil the artist Justine sent me this deck to take a look at and I remember feeling particularly flawed and moved by some of these images you can see here that this um, particular particular woman that's been drawn has had a mastectomy which um i mean when do you see that you know when do you see that in an oracle deck but it's such a common thing that so many people have to go through um so you know it's just i mean it's just beautiful and look at this um this kind of subheading and the sentence that goes with it i live with eternal hope i believe i can endure great sorrow and emerge stronger through any transformation i mean that is just so moving and beautiful so i really want to give this deck more time and spend more time with it um i i, I did find it a little um 
disconcerting at first that there is so much focus on these locations where I've never been um you know what I mean but I think spending time with this deck over the next month or two and actually kind of googling the names of these places that have been mentioned in these sentences that are connected to the theme of each of the oracle cards is an important part of the work you know there's no point in just um, setting aside a perfectly good oracle deck and never working with it just because I've never been to those places and I can't envision those places and I don't know what the energy of those places is um, you know that's not a, a good enough reason to set aside an oracle deck as beautiful as this so I'm going to do the work to really um, if I feel like I need to connect with one of the locations that's been mentioned which a lot of them I can't even pronounce um, here it says like the ancient cowrie trees of Waip Waipua forest I grow in the light of sisterhood now I don't know if I've pronounced cowrie correctly and I don't know if I've pronounced what way poor or why power or why power correctly so it's a journey that i'm going to have to go on you know and there's no point in setting something aside just because i don't really feel connected to a lot of the locations that she's mentioning she's mentioning also a location in this particular card um she doesn't mention a location in every card but certainly there are a lot of cards where she mentions a specific location in New Zealand and I just feel like part of the work of me working um, with this deck in, a, in an effective way is to learn the pronunciations and to understand why the creator has felt the need to speak about these particular places and create art that speaks to the energy of these particular places. I really love this one. I love the fact that she's got um, terrain, you know, on these women. This is really cool to me. There's a, there's a mountain here and some lush verdant green here and then you've got here kind of a waterfall and trees on either side it's just beautiful it says here i achieve my goals like the albatross navigates with body and mind i reach deep within myself to achieve my aims and this is really some altar worthy stuff right here you know this is a really beautiful deck for the altar and i think that that's another thing that I think makes it important to really understand more about the locations and the things that have been referenced here um, so that you can get past that stuff and work with that stuff rather than feeling like you're resisting it. I completely love the expression here and I love the hair. I love that it looks like there's actually stars in the hair. It actually looks like you're looking at outer space when you look at that hair. It's like the cosmos. It's just stunning. I love all these wrinkles. You know, you don't see enough fucking good wrinkles, you know? Good, hard, visible from across the room wrinkles. You don't see that enough in tarot and oracle decks. So I'm loving the diversity here. I'm really enjoying the different portrayals that are going on. Um, I also really love this colour. This is a really beautiful, soothing colour, very serene. Oh, I love this body harness with the armour on it. That's really cool. So I'm going to be working with this North and South Song of the Heart Oracle. I'm going to leave the link down below for you guys. This is absolutely stunning. I love, again, that she's got terrain on here. She's actually got, um, you know, scenes from planet Earth on here. Here she's got this woman wearing the ocean with a ship on the dress. And it says, I am brave. Within lies the courage of my ancestors who bravely sought new adventures. That's really, um, really interesting message. This is just gorgeous. I'm just going to take you through the rest since I may as well. Wow, look, her hair's turning into a horse. That's really beautiful. Very cool. I love this one. Gorgeous. This final one is so stunning. I follow my heart like a rainbow trout. I choose to move against the current so I can move forward. And it's just that incredible, vibrant pink red hair. And this really rather on point looking eyeshadow there as well. Nice, strong look. So, yeah, I'm going to be working with these uh, this Oracle deck and um, really kind of getting to know that more. OK, guys, I'm not going to spend too long on the last Oracle deck in my Reach for More basket for the simple reason that I have very recently done an unboxing of it. So I'm just going to refer to it in brief before I move on. OK, I'm just going to pop those back in there. And it is the Vessel Oracle, my darlings. I'm sure quite a few of you will have seen the unboxing and this is just adorable i'll leave the unboxing down below if you haven't had a chance to check it out and you would like to 
this is the other oracle deck that i'm going to be working with I absolutely love this Oracle deck. It gives me all good vibes. It makes me feel so many good things. I just really get a positive, enchanted feeling from it. It's just gorgeous. The self-care card is really beautiful, really important, very necessary. There's a playfulness to this deck, but it certainly can give profound readings, as I'm sure you can imagine, and I have been using it for clients. I got into using it for clients really in the following week after unboxing because I just felt like I really was ready and it was giving me so much you know there was so much to work with so many different things to unlock I love this one with all the different color stars so I'm really happy to work with the vessel oracle more for November and possibly also moving on into December just giving it my focus guys okay so that's everything for my reach for more basket i'm really excited with those things and i'll let you know how i got on with them so now i want to talk about a couple of things that i'm really excited about in terms of decks that are being funded um first of all the dust to onyx deck is finally nearly on its way to us and i'm really excited about this one i haven't um actually kind of funded a deck for a long time um become a backer backed that's what i'm trying to say not funded i don't fund the entire deck on my own <laughs> i haven't become a backer for a deck in a long time but i fell in love with dust to onyx a melanated tarot deck and i had to become a kickstarter backer for it and it's finally um getting to the to the point where it will be ready for delivery to us so i'm really excited the creator recently showed the box that it's coming in which is very very bling very luxe i'm really excited to see it to play with it to open it to squeal over it to squeal some more etc so i'll show you a couple of images from it so that you understand um, what it is that i'm going to be receiving and then obviously i will do a full unboxing and then later a review when it comes to me so this is the justice card how lush is that how deep how emotive is that so excited to, to actually finally be receiving this guys it's just oh oh god i can't wait so excited okay so this is the full again it's just that depth the depth of color and the emotive expressive oh, I did, I, there's not enough good things i can say and there's not enough ways that I can describe how I feel about the fact that this deck is soon going to be in my hot little hands. Very, very excited about this. Here's Ace of Cups. Amazing. I'm looking forward to getting the entire deck out and putting it on the floor and then just kind of stepping away and giving myself that overview. Because I definitely feel that when you look up close versus when you look further away, different features of each card pop out at you and different things seem to be in the foreground or background so i'm really interested in that and i'm also just interested to see these colors actually up close and on the cardstock so guys if you want to know more about dust to onyx tarot i'll leave the kickstarter page below and also the website for you and i recently just became a backer of the marigold tarot as well um, which actually just closed its campaign a little while ago but I had to mention it to some people on my well I had to mention it on my Facebook page because I was so excited about it and actually from me mentioning it quite a few of my followers on Facebook backed it as well before it actually before the campaign ended and said it was exactly what they were looking for and it doesn't surprise me at all so take a look at this the marigold tarot definitely no buyer's remorse about becoming a backer here this is the death card in marigold tarot i mean it's just ridiculously stunning isn't it it's just oh my god i can't believe how gorgeous this deck is and i can't believe i actually managed to become a backer just at the last minute after loads of umming and ahhing I don't know why but i just wasn't totally sure straight away i think it's because i try not to buy too many decks it's not that there was anything wrong with this deck it's not that i was unsure because of a design element nothing like that it was just that i try not to buy too many decks i just purchased holly simple and the vessel oracle and i normally i like to leave it quite a lot of time before i think of adding something new to the collection but i thought you know what it's being funded it's going to take a while to get to us um if i if i miss out on it and i don't back it i'm definitely going to regret it because it's just so me 
it's just gorgeous and I love this gold very delicate outline and yeah just the use of the color the way that this the creator has used the black and done that fine line work look at the sun it's just stunning so I'm really, really looking forward to receiving that. I haven't had a look at the updates to find out whether or not the expected time of arrival has moved. I don't even remember what it is. All I know is that I'm a backer and that's what matters. <laughs> the Marigold Tarot. So I'm really excited about that as well. Again, guys, if you're interested, I will leave the now closed Kickstarter campaign down below so you can take a look. If there's a website, I'll leave that down below as well. Um, I'd love to know what you guys are currently backing or thinking of backing, what's going on on Kickstarter. Tell me because I get all of my information usually from the For the Love of Cards Facebook group. I'm actually not very good at going out and finding these things and doing it on my own initiative, but I do like to check out what people are excited about in the Facebook group. And that's how I found the Marigold Tarot. I can't remember how I found um, Dust to Onyx Tarot. I'm not sure if the creator gave me a heads up about it. No, I think somebody somebody messaged me on twitter um kind of tagged me on twitter and said i think you would really like this tarot deck um and yeah as soon as i saw um the the pictures for dusty one x i was like and i'm a backer but having said that having said that i'm not going to get into the habit of purchasing too many decks at once but i just knew that there was only a limited time to back marigold tarot and same with dust to onyx and i just knew that i had to have those two in my collection so i'm really excited to get my hands on them i think what i'm going to do now is instead of doing my card comparisons i'm going to put them in another card slinger video which will be out before too long because i really Really want to dive deeply into comparisons and I want to give myself that time and obviously this is a very lengthy video as I expected it to be so I don't want to cram too much into one video so I think I'm just going to make the card comparison card slinger episode separately so what I want to do just to round things off today is to talk about a few of my favorite cards at this point in time at this point in my life if you will cards that when I see them when they come up in readings I'm always really happy that they did and they give me a really good feeling so the first thing I'm going to reach for that is really in my mind right now is one of the cards from Vessel Oracle that I absolutely adore and it is the childhood card I've got a real thing for this card and one of the reasons I've got a bit of a thing for the childhood card is obviously I'm really interested in inner child healing and inner child work. You know this, guys, if you've been watching me for any length of time, you know what I'm all about. This is the childhood card in Vessel Oracle. And the reason that I love it so much is because when I first saw it as a part of this deck, I really felt like it was probably a little bit too specific and it wasn't general and overarching enough as a theme to be relevant to everybody who would have a reading and it maybe wouldn't be easily translatable. Uh, and perhaps there wouldn't be as many insights that would come to mind for this because it is really specifically um, about childhood and about the, you know, the experience of being a child and so on. So, but what's happened is every single time it's come up in a client reading, it's been absolutely the card that should have come through. And there's a real depth to that. There is something really profound about that. And so this card really exceeded it, its expectations for me. I felt like this was going to be probably the problem card if there was going to be a problem card in Vessel Oracle. And I was very, very pleasantly surprised. This card is very versatile, very accessible. It has definitely been a really relevant card, a pertinent card to come up for every client that's received it. And I feel like when it does come up, it takes the reading with this deck to new territory. And there's something very profound and very emotive about the childhood card in Vessel Oracle. So so I wanted to mention that as being a card that I particularly really enjoy and I get a lot out of. And I know immediately what I want to reach for next. <laughs> it's my Oracle of Echoes from Anatorian, one of my favourite Oracle decks. This is absolutely beautiful, guys. This Oracle deck is really something else. And the card that I want to talk about is the Discord card. You just see if I can find that. Here we go. Discord. And it looks kind of like an, it is really like a large piece of fruit, kind of like a glass red apple hanging from a tree. Very surreal. And it has two people screaming bloody murder at each other inside this large bulbous bubble like fruit. Very, very interesting. There are so many layers to this card. 
it's just really intriguing and of course as many times as it comes up to represent the relationship between two people which may be strained or tense um, it does come up just as many times to represent discord within self so arguments you're having with yourself tension that you're feeling with regard to your own decision making process you know problems you're having with your own self-worth or your own self-belief so as many times as it does come up for um to represent disagreements between people or confusions between people it's also really representative of the tough parts of that inner work or indeed running away from the inner work and experiencing discord with self as a result um, i really love this card and it's certainly high impact it's very dramatic and there's something about it that really just calls you to it and it, it's almost demanding that you do the work to see things in a deeper way or look at things differently and there is a lot of anger and a lot of intensity in this red there's this feeling of being trapped in this bubble and having to have this argument like there's nowhere else for these two people to go almost they're trapped in this joint headspace and they have to just fight it out um, there's something about this card that for me is just really appealing just at the moment so i wanted to mention that as well what else am i really loving what else is giving me joy um certainly i really enjoy the king and queen of cups in the zombie tarot which i showed you guys earlier i won't get them out again but i really do love them as far as kings and queens go oh i know i know a card that i absolutely love of late from crazy sexy love notes by chris carr anybody who receives my exclusive video newsletters that i occasionally send out will have actually been sent the unboxing video for this deck i did it exclusively just for my newsletter subscribers if you're not subscribed to my newsletter and you would like to be i will leave the link down below so you can go over and make sure that you are subscribed because i do occasionally make videos where i'm rambling or doing um you know card pulls or unboxing something as was the case with crazy sexy love notes and i just want to show what i would say is this deck's version of the three of cups which i really enjoy oh although i really love the forgiveness heals card as well i love that color that, that use of color is really lovely here we go find your tribe i just love this there's just something really i don't know vibrant and exuberant about it i really enjoy it I know for a lot of people you might think this isn't particularly my style of deck and it certainly will not be the style of a lot of people that watch me but it, I've got a big place in my heart for it. I only just recently purchased it and it just kept winking at me for ages. I kept seeing it on Instagram. I really love the Believe card as well. That could be on my altar, no problem at all. Absolutely love the colours, love that unicorn. So yeah, it just kept kind of jumping out at me and eventually I was just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to get it. Um, oh, and I really like the Give Each Other Space card as well. Really enjoy that one. Before I go, I just want to show you one more card that has been in my line of sight recently that I've also really enjoyed and gotten a lot out of, and that is the Hermit card from the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. You actually can't purchase this tarot deck anymore in the form that I have it in. Um, it is going, I believe, into mass production at some point in the not too distant future but i have uh, the original edition here let me see if i can go through and find the hermit card unfortunately there there were issues with the card stock for this original edition uh, my one's okay but there were a lot of issues with the card stock it was unfortunate um but uh good to have it nonetheless because it's not available anymore for sale and it is certainly a really interesting concept and it's just great illustrations Let's see if i can find this hermit here we go how gorgeous is that depiction of the hermit guys look at all the light and the way the light is is falling over his face the peaceful placid look the deep meditation and that eye in the flame absolutely stunning Darlings, the light has changed while I've been doing this second part of the video. I do hope that you still were able to see all of the details for the cards. I will be back with a comparison episode of Card Slinger fairly soon because I really do want to get something like that out and I want to kind of uh, stretch my legs in that regard as well and kind of 
test out my theories with regard to interpretations and breaking down imagery and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to going on that journey with you. Thank you for um, spending some time with me here during this episode of Card Slinger. And do let me know if you like this format, if there's anything you would like to see particularly in this format, anything that you'd be particularly interested in me considering including. Um, yeah, let me know what else you might like to see. If you want to purchase a reading from me, Doll Faces, you certainly always can do. I'm at kelly-annmaddox.com. If you look down below in the down bar, you will see the link that takes you directly to my store where you can browse my reading options. You can get a custom reading from me, or you can look in more reading options where you'll find a bunch of different templates. I also have some budget readings on my store as well. So if you don't want to drop too much coin, but you just want to kind of see how you get along with me and how I read for you, then you can choose a budget option as well. Go over there and take a look. And if my Yule readings are not up at the time that this video goes live, then I will make sure that I put the link below as soon as they are up, guys. OK, so they may not be available at the time that I click publish on this video but they will be available very shortly. I'm bringing the Yule readings out early this year. And one of the reasons I'm doing that is because they are resoundingly popular really as soon as Samhain is over. So whereas a lot of people like to just think of Yule and Christmas um, from December onwards, there are a lot of people that really start to prepare for Yule and psycho-spiritually prepare for the energies and the themes of that festival and also Christmas um, as soon as Samhain wraps up. So I want to make sure the readings are out as soon as people actually want them. Okay, much love, guys. Blessed be and happy card slinging.